Um, it's really great to see you all. Uh, very, very exciting for me to be up here. Um, I'm going to try and do this from an iPad. Uh, and I've got 90% battery. Tim said if the battery run out, it's probably time to stop talking. I think that's, <laughs> that's, that's a fair point, isn't it? Um, genuinely, it's really excited to be here. And it's really good to see some new faces as well. Uh, as Tim said, I'm Ben. Um, uh, I live locally and occasionally get, to, uh, get asked to come up here and speak. Um, so that's why I'm here today. Uh, I'm going to talk about uh, belonging to a church and the importance of why we should belong to a church family. And so if you, if you asked most people in England, uh, like in villages like in Brompton, what they think about having a church there, uh, one answer that you might get is, oh, it's very important to have an active church there. Uh, very important to have lots of people there so that I don't have to go along to it. <laughs> and that's, that's quite an Anglican viewpoint. You see, our village has a lovely church. It's very picturesque at the top of the hill. Uh, you might hear the church bells ringing, which sound lovely. And they do make a lovely backdrop for wedding photos as well. <laughs> Uh, or, or maybe they've got a church at the heart of their community in the village and they run events like duck races, village fates, raffles, bring and buy cake sales to raise money for a new church roof or the vicar's new haircut or something like that. <laughs> um, but they're all quite typical Church of England views uh, of what the church is. Uh, it's an old building where people go and sit and get bored on a Sunday morning. Uh, or maybe it's open again during the week for like a little random event. Um, so if you've ever watched Father Ted or Vicar of Dibley or something, then maybe that might be your viewpoint too. Um, but as Tim said earlier, that's not a church, that's just a building. Uh, buildings that are dying out with huge maintenance costs and ageing congregations. So we are going to completely have a look at what the church is and how to love our church uh, in the next 10 weeks. So, going right back to the beginning then, the Greek word that we use or that we've, is translated for us is ekklesia, uh, and its literal translation is uh, gathering or assembly of citizens, ekklesia. So we're gathered here uh, in an assembly hall and hopefully most of us are maybe British citizens so we're at a pretty good starting point uh, for our series so far. So Tim pointed to us the book, Love Your Church, that's what we're going to be going through and in this kind of post-Covid era it's really really exciting um, to be going back to normality, to meet together. Uh, indoors in here. Uh, hopefully it's going to be a little bit warmer once we've got the heat on and we get a few more people in as well. Um, and it's just going to be really, really exciting. Uh, we'll stay away from views on fixtures and fittings and curtains and paint on the walls and stuff. And instead we're going to be talking about one another, uh, our family as a church. Um, and that's you guys all here today. Uh, that's anyone listening online. Uh, and anyone that wants to be here but can't quite make it. So, how much do you feel like you belong to this church family? Now, all of us have got some sense of belonging. Uh, that's probably why you're here. Um, but think about now how much you can take part in church as to how belonging, or how much of the church you belong to. So as we go through this series, we'll look at through the different chapters like Tim said, such as welcoming, gathering, caring, serving, uh, and all the different parts that make up church life. Um, but why are you here today? Why do you feel like you belong in this building at this point in time right now? Well, we ran a summer camp uh, a few weeks ago uh, for teenagers. One of the analogies we used uh, that we start off the week with is we use the analogy of football pitch um, to see where the young people are at with their Christian lives. Um, and I think this analogy might work quite well with us this morning. Um, I'm not a footballer, I don't really know anything about football. Um, 
but stick with me on this analogy because if I can understand it, you guys definitely can. <laughs> okay, so we've got a football pitch. Uh, hopefully you can imagine what that looks like. Uh, we're a good starting point. So if there's a game going on, we've got players running around and enjoying it. They're the ones that are really taking part in the game of football. They're the most active ones. They're on the centre of the field, kicking the ball and being completely involved in every way. But then maybe you've got some of the other members of the team and they're sat on the bench. Uh, they're watching the game, wanting to get involved. They're waiting their turn, but they haven't been asked yet. Still others, they might be in the stand. They're watching the game from a little bit further back. Uh, they're enjoying it. Uh, they're kind of feeling involved because they've got their tickets to go and see it. Uh, but they're not actually playing or taking part in the game. Maybe there's other people in the car park uh, they know what's going on inside, but they're just outside the walls. Uh, they can hear the noise, they're kind of interested, but they don't want to go inside. They don't want to commit to buying a ticket. Or maybe there's people that aren't interested in the football at all. They were just walking past the stadium uh, on their way to a nice English cricket match, or more likely the beach, given where we live here. Uh, they're walking by and they've heard that there's something going on there, but they've got no interest stopping by. Um, so that kind of analogy kind of works for our church uh, and why you might or might not be here today. So I'm not going to ask for a show of hands for anyone, um, but hopefully you can see yourself as fitting into one of these categories if church was a football match. Uh, and if you're not in one of those categories, if there's another one, come and see me afterwards I can add to my little analogy for next year. Okay, so our church is made up of all sorts of people. Uh, it's not a Premier League game. You don't, know, you don't need to know how to play football perfectly to be involved. Uh, we just want everyone here uh, to be able to take part in whatever way they can. We want you to belong to our church. And that brings us on to the passage that Simon read to us at the beginning. Um, can't see any Bibles around in this church, which is a little bit weird. But hopefully if you've got an electronic device, phone, tablet, uh, if you brought your desktop computer with you, that's fantastic. Find somewhere to plug it in. Um, but if we've got your passage, uh, we're back in 1 Corinthians chapter 12. Um, and get that open. So before we read that, uh, we'll just make the assumption that we're all inside this football stadium. We're at least watching the game, even if we're not taking part. Uh, so we'll park the idea of that football game for the minute. And we're going to use Paul's analogy of the human body. So we're all parts of this body, the church. Paul's writing to the church in Corinth. Uh, it's a pretty new church. It's just been set up, uh, getting established. And it's got a few issues. It's got quite a lot of issues. Uh, and some of those issues will be similar to what we have uh, today in our church or in lots of other churches around. Humans haven't really changed over the years. Maybe we've got a bit more technologically involved. I don't think they had problems with projectors and things back then. Um, but Paul is writing to the church in Corinth, and there's a lot of points that we can take from that directly for us. So 1 Corinthians chapter 12, and we'll just read from verse 12. Just as a body, though one, has many parts, but all its many parts form one body. So it is with Christ. For we were all baptised by one spirit, so as to form one body. Whether Jews or Gentiles, slave or free, and we were all given the one spirit to drink. And so the body is not made up of one part, but of many. So, if you're here today, uh, or if you're listening online, uh, you are one of these parts. Okay? Uh, whether it's your first time here today or if you've been coming for the last 80 years, you are one of the parts of this body. And so we are all important. Uh, and as a church family, we will all work together in different ways, different parts, belonging to South Street Church or more importantly, belonging to the body of Christ. So verse 15. Now if the foot should say, because I'm not a hand, I do not belong to the body. It would not for that reason stop being part of the body. 
And if the ear should say, because I'm not an I, I don't belong to the body, it would not for that reason stop being part of the body. See, if the whole body were an eye, where would the sense of hearing be? If the whole body were an ear, where would the sense of smell be? So Paul's saying to us, we don't all need to be musicians. We don't all need to be up the front. We don't all need to work with the young people. We don't all need to do the accounting or the emailing. What's important is that we all belong to the body. One body. And we all have a role to play in this body. So if we're all part of the body of this church, then there is something we can do to help it grow. There is something we can do to help it grow. My favourite verse is verse 22. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. On the contrary, those parts of the body that seem to be weaker are indispensable. Isn't that crazy? So if you feel like you haven't got what it takes or you feel like you can't be used or that you don't belong in the church, then you're wrong. It seems crazy to tell people that they're wrong in this day and age, but, but it's true. Those parts that seem to be weaker are indispensable. That's pretty awesome. But that is how God loves to use people. He deliberately takes people that are weaker in some things and uses those weaknesses to show his power. By being dependent on him, you can overcome those weaknesses. Now this passage that we've read, um, it's written just after a passage on spiritual gifts. So Paul is talking mainly to Christians about how they can use their gifts in the church. And we're talking about belonging to a church and how important that is. So uh, what I want you to take from this is that as a church, there is a place for every type of person. And we need all of you. You all belong here. We don't want you to be a church ninja. Someone who sneaks in the back after the service has started and then disappears before we've had a chance to say hi or get to know you. Uh, being part of this gathering, being part of this community, that is really, really important. Uh, maybe you've noticed something that no one else has. Or maybe someone else has noticed something in you that you didn't know about yourself. See, God wants everyone in his church to be relational with one another. Relationships are part of his community. And relationships are at the core of our beliefs as well. See, God is a relational being. He's not just hidden up in the sky there and we come to church on a Sunday and say some prayers and read some hymns and, and then that's it. He is a relational being. Three in one. Father, Son and Holy Spirit. They are constantly in relationship with one another and God wants to be in a relationship with you. Just like any relationship, things will work better when we meet face to face. We meet with God through the pages of the Bible as he speaks to us and we communicate back with him through prayer. Relationships require meeting up regularly. I'm sure most of us have found the last 18 months pretty difficult, only being able to meet virtually or on the phone or through Zoom or Skype or whatever you've been using. Uh, it was exceptionally tough on my family uh, as my dad's cancer came back and we couldn't meet up as a family through his last few months. I got closer to my dad uh, in his final years as his faith grew and we texted each other daily Bible passages uh, as encouragement. And uh, not being able to see him and hug him regularly was really, really tough. And we had to work hard at our relationship to chat whenever we could. Uh, and video calling was a, a great technology and sending memes to each other um, really helped. But God wants us to be with him in a relationship, not through video calls, but through prayer, through the Bible, 
and through worship in a corporate setting, in a community. Now, meeting up together as a church to worship and praise him encourages each other. It builds us up as we sing or like some of us just make a joyful noise to the Lord. Uh, it also encourages the music team. Uh, they've been practicing, they've been rehearsing through the week and they help lead us uh, in our praise to God. Uh, like Tim said, it's not a Jesus fan club. Uh, it is a relationship with Jesus. Uh, and of course, there's going to be some people in the church who are hard to have relationships with. But that's okay. Relationships need work. For a community to grow, we've got to bear with one another, share ideas, and be graceful in our responses. Just as Paul was saying to the church in Corinth, the body is made up of many different parts which serve loads of different purposes, just like us. Uh, so we're different people. We're going to see things very differently. Some of us are really loud and extroverts. Uh, some of us are much quieter. We like to stay in the background and work behind the scenes. But that doesn't mean that we have different roles. That doesn't mean that we can't get along. Uh, in fact, it's actually great that God has put us together in this way. I've just One of the things I didn't write down in my prep, which I noticed as we read it earlier, was verse 18. But in fact, God has placed the parts of the body, every one of them, just as he wanted them to be. We're not here by chance, people. Just like the body, the toe is pretty far from the earlobe. Uh, they don't have much in common. Uh, but without that little toe, which might seem insignificant, you'd have trouble balancing or changing direction. Because uh, that supports the rest of the foot. Uh, and without an earlobe, especially if you've got no hair, sound's going to travel straight past you. Uh, it's going to be a lot more difficult to hear things. Tim and I know that struggle. <laughs> so even though these two parts don't have a relationship with each other, they are indeed both part of the body and they are both necessary and needed. See, I'm telling you the truth. The church needs you and you need the church. Please don't be someone that comes along at 4 p.m. on a Sunday and then runs out at 5 to 5 and has nothing to do with the church in the rest of the week. Even if you read your Bible every day and you pray every day, God wants you to be involved, to be relational with others in the church, to stay afterwards and find someone that you haven't spoken to before and to pray with them. Don't be a church ninja. Be part of the church community. Um, if you've got a Bible, if you've got your phone handy, um, let's just turn quickly to Hebrews chapter 10. And we're going to look at verses 24 and 25. Uh, it's a lot more difficult without the, the Bibles in the church, but Hebrews chapter 10, verses 24 to 25. The writer of the Hebrews is talking to a church and encouraging them to persevere through the difficulties that they face. So verse 24. And let us consider how we may spur one another on toward love and good deeds. Not giving up meeting together, as some are in the habit of doing, but encouraging one another. And all the more as you see the day approaching. Three great things to point out here. Number one, spurring each other on. Not just, oh, you look great today, I love your hair, great shoes, cars looking good. But spurring each other on towards love and good deeds. Servantness, servant-heartedness. Number two, meeting together. Don't give up meeting together. Be in the habit of doing this, not just on a Sunday, but during the week at home groups, when you're around town, after work in the evenings, meeting up with lunch, uh, having lunch with people. And number three, encouraging one another more and more as the day approaches. Obviously the day that Jesus is going to come back. But until he comes back, we should be encouraging each other every day. Bible verses, texts, prayer, meeting up, just having a coffee with someone. Uh, these are some of the reasons we meet together on Sundays and during the week. Please, please get yourself stuck into home groups. Uh, we've been meeting virtually as a home group. We thought about meeting up in person, but we're going to stay virtual just 
for a little bit. Um, so there's not really any excuse to, to not be able to take part. And you can be in your pyjamas <laughs> and still be part of home group, even if you're not hosting it, Tim. Uh, so if you take anything away from this today, please make meeting up in person one of your highest priorities uh, on a Sunday and during the week. Uh, it's not to say that coming to church on a Sunday is the only thing that we do towards our faith. Obviously, we want to be reading our Bibles daily as much as we can. We want to be praying, talking to our Father as much as we can. But meeting together in person as a church body on a Sunday to spur one another on and to encourage one another, it's just so important. I'm going back to the football analogy again. Okay, I'm really not a footballer, but if I was going to play a big, important match, Manchester City versus Manchester United or whatever it is, then I would be spending all week practicing, getting my kit ready, getting my kicks right. Uh, I'd be all excited when I get there. And if there were only three or four supporters, I'd be a little bit downhearted. Whereas to walk into a stadium packed full of thousands of people, uh, all cheering and excited and supporting. It's going to be a huge encouragement to me as I get ready to play that game on the pitch. And so it should be even more so with our church because we don't need to be wearing the right colour kit. Uh, we don't need to buy tickets to get here. Uh, and we can bring each other joy and love and excitement as we meet here. Uh, so Tony Merida in the book, um, page 25, he says, Belonging to a church means investing your life in a gospel-centred community who joyfully serve one another and advance Jesus' mission together. I think that's a great way of summing it up. Because uh, unlike in a football match where there's two teams pitted against one another, <coughs> one of them is going to lose. We are all winners here together. We have already been saved by the one that we're worshipping. How much better is that than any football match or anything else? You don't need a ticket, you're going to be wearing the right kit, and you certainly don't have a single chance of being on the losing side. Mm. South Street Church is a gospel-centred community or family uh, and we are here to joyfully serve our risen Lord and Saviour and serve one another. I'm pretty excited to be part of that. That's one of the reasons that we've changed the service time to the afternoon. Uh, you can enjoy Sunday morning sports and activities with your kids. You can have your Sunday roast without the guilt of having to leave early in case your chicken burns. <laughs> and you can meet people on the beach and invite them along to the service at four o'clock. Invite them to be part of this faith community, to belong to the Church of Jesus. So hopefully you're not going to be rushing off after the service now. Um, you can stay and chat and develop relationships. You can see where you can serve, or where you can point others where you think they might be able to serve best. Um, we can be attending church on a Sunday at home groups and making them our priorities during the week. Let's spur one another on towards love and good deeds. Let's meet up regularly and get in the habit of doing so. Let's encourage each other more and more each day. Let's love our church and know that we belong here because God wants us here. And verse 27, just to finish with, now you are the body of Christ and each one of you is a part of it. Amen. Amen.